Paul would wait to hear where he is and then they'd head over there. And I mean, he is just being literally hunted down. But the Bible says on two occasions during that period of time, the Lord delivered Saul into David's hands. God put Saul in a position where they were sleeping and he and his army around him all laying around. The armor bearers weren't on duty where one is always woke. Sometimes all of them sleep. And the Bible says that on two different occasions, David was right there, could have killed Saul. On the first occasion, he cut off part of his robe. You remember that? Cut off part of his robe. On the second occasion, he took his sword and his water, and he was right there. And both times after he got a distance away and he called to Saul and his army, he said, the Lord delivered me into your hands, but God would not let me put a hand to you and do his anointed any harm. Now, you know you got to be living in God consciousness in order when your enemy who is hunting you down is right there. You know what you do if you're living only according to self-consciousness. The first law of nature is self-preservation. And that means when somebody's trying to kill you and you have an opportunity, you take them out. That's self-consciousness. And you know that's people consciousness. Because if you listen to the folk, they say, kill him! What's the matter with you? He right there, kill him. And you walk away. See, that's what's wrong with you. That's why they're going to get you one day because you don't have any better sense. Don't you have people in your life like that? Talking all emphatic, don't know any Bible at all. But they know what they think and they know what they want to tell you. You can't live your life based on what you think and feel. You can't live your life based on what others tell you. David said, I had him right there, but I'm living in the presence of God, and all I know is God has not given me a word to take out his anointed. On one occasion, David said, if God's ready for him, the Lord will let Saul go into battle, and he'll kill him in battle. But it is not my job to take out this man. And let me tell you something, the only way you reach conclusions like that is you have to live your life conscious of God's presence. David understood that very clearly. That's why he writes in the word of God and he tells us, some of us have heard this passage, but this is the wisdom out of which passages like this come. Psalm 139. Some of you know it or know parts of it, but Psalm 139, beginning at verse 7, tells you, where can I go from your spirit? See, David learned this on the run. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Verse 10, if I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light, become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. See, David understands that you can't run and hide from God. I'm running from Saul, he said, but I can't run from God. Wherever I am, the Lord is there, and so I've got to live my life conscious of his presence. That's why I've got to treat people right. That's why I've got to make godly decisions, because God's with me. I want to tell somebody that you've got to make this time in your life a time where you prove and improve your walk with God and where you come to realize that I live my life to please God. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 9, so we make it our aim to please God. That's what you got to shoot for. He gives us the picture of someone shooting for something, having a goal, having a target. And he says, so we make it our aim. My life is a bow and arrow aimed at the target of pleasing God. That's why I'm on the planet, so that I can please God. And Romans 14, 12 tells us the reason why you ought to please God. It says, so then each of us must give an account of himself to God. Do you know one day you're going to run into God in judgment? Every one of us. And on that occasion, God won't be asking you what you thought. And he won't ask you what the people told you to do. The only question will be, how did you respond to my directives for your life? 
We must answer to God. We must give an account of ourselves to God. Look at Romans 14, 12 for yourself if you don't believe me. It doesn't say, so then each of us must give an account to our cousin. <laughs> so what you doing listening to your cousin? Each of us must give an account to our friend. What you doing listening to your friend? Giving you ungodly advice. The Bible says, blessed is he who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. You've got to defy and deny people talking those things which are not consistent with the word of God. Well, honey, here's what you need to do according to who? The enemy of your soul will use your own flesh, your own thinking. Just sit on your shoulder and whisper in your ear. You know what you need to do, don't you? You got to learn to pay attention to where your directives are coming from. Some of y'all just hear a thought and say, that sounds interesting. No, no, you got to learn to ask yourself, who's talking? You can't just eat anything that's set before you. You got to find out who the chef is. Who cooked this up? See, if you listen to me, ah, ah, I can tell you some things. No, you have to learn to live your life in the presence of God. God is the one who holds your destiny in his hand, and he is the one who is going to finish what he started in your life. And I'm here to ask somebody, for God's sake, I want you to give your life over into the hands of the Lord and say, God, for you I'll live, and for you I'm going to die. Because when it's all said and done, it is about you, Lord. And so David, while on the run, while going through hell, while disillusioned, while wondering how come he has a promise, but he is running from the very man he is to succeed on the throne. While he has very few answers, he at least has a mind made up to do the will of God. And let me tell you something. When you live a God-conscious life, it'll shape everything you do. It shapes how you work on your job because you realize it's not about your supervisor. I'm on my job to serve God. My job is a means of income that God has provided for this season. But my job isn't my source of life. And my job certainly isn't the end of anything in my life. It's just a means for me to make ends meet. So I live on my job. I work on my job as unto the Lord who goes to work with me every day. See, that'll change everything. That'll change you who are used to saying, supervisor here today? Come on, can we talk? Don't go to the bathroom now. Just sit tight. Supervisor, they're not here today? Oh, bet. And then you sit in your cubicle on your little desk or wherever you are and you just chill out all day when you know there's things you're supposed to be doing. You've been contracted to provide a service. There's something they're expecting you to do, depending on you to do. But you figure if nobody's watching me, I'll just chill out. I'll take a day off without leaving the place. I know I'm talking to you. I'm not preaching for nothing. I wonder, is he talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. You think I'm talking to, I stand up here talking to myself. You're working for God. You don't sit there and say, I'm going to just email my friends all day long. Just surf the web, surf the net, just see what's going on. And then go take a two and a half hour lunch. No, no. You work for God. And don't do that little Christian religious rationalization. Well, you know, this company is not like they're serving God anyway. It's not like what they're doing is righteous. I mean, if I was working in a righteous place, I'd be more in tune to do things to really help them. But this place is just a bunch of heathens. They're all going to hell anyway. I came to tell you, you are out of the will of God. I came to tell you that you are living your life in the presence of God and he is not pleased.